Hi, I'm Nathan and welcome to Crazy Amazing Designs. In this video, we are taking a look at the basics of ProPresenter. Playlists, libraries, songs, how to organize things. And this is gonna be a great video if you are a beginner or a maybe a slightly intermediary user. You've been using ProPresenter for a while, but you wanna learn more. You've decided it's time to dive in deep. Let's get into this video. So in the top left, we have our library. We can kind of minimize all of this and then bring it back. So our main library in ProPresenter is where all of our songs, where all of our media, where all of our content are stored in ProPresenter. If we go to File, New, Presentation, all of these pre new presentations are stored in our libraries. Some people do this differently. We can create multiple libraries. If I go here, new library, I can have one for maybe the youth and then my main one for, you know, big church on Sun on the weekends. And then you have a different one for the college ministry. However, you kind of want to set this up. You can do this many different ways. I like to just have one, but I do understand if you have a computer that's being used by a bunch of different ministry areas, a bunch of different people, it is kind of nice to have their own version of any given song that they might be leading. But you could also, I'll just mention this real quick, uh, this song, Good Grace, you could go up to the arrangements, create a youth arrangement, a young adults arrangement, a weekend arrangement, and then you can jump back and forth between it. So then all of the groups, when you set up the song, all of the groups that you create are constant, they're consistent, but there are different versions, different arrangements of the slides for the different ministries, or you could just do it separately. But so yeah, that's the thing. So we have one library currently, and then I have a bunch of playlists. So playlists are where we divide things up and we grab exactly what we need out of the library and we put it into the playlist for our weekend service. So you can see here, I've got my announcement loop, then I've got my countdown, and then we've got four worship songs, and then we've got some uh, hosting, and then we've got some sermon message notes down here. So this is this is a really busy file, right? But this is maybe what a typical weekend would look like. And then here's I got a funeral, and then we did a conference, and then I did a worship night, and then I did a retreat, and I've just got a, a re another retreat. Like I've just got all these different options for events that I've done. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. If you are enjoying this content, go ahead and like this video and subscribe to my channel here on YouTube. If you're curious as to how I have this multi-view box in the top right, that is because this is my ProPresenter template. So we've got our main output, our live stream output, our stage display output, and inside of my template, this box is available and this whole template is available for purchase at crazyamazingdesigns.com. You also get my list of macros, my looks, my stage display layouts, and so much more. In this song, for example, if I click on the first slide, you can see here we're gonna trigger the macro as soon as we click this first slide, and then everything is formatted correctly. Here, I wanna talk about just the playlist in the library, right? So when we add a new song, we are going to go to search. We are going to either import it through song select or through multi-tracks. I'm just gonna go ahead and grab this random song. So I'm gonna go ahead and click import. And now it's gonna bring up this import window. And here we can break the slides up by paragraphs. That's what we'll do. Uh, we can set a specific theme based on all these theme options. Let's do the two, let's just do like line in the middle. Let's just do bold text in the middle. Okay, and now down at the bottom, we have, the, we have a library selection. So sample library. I only have one library. Your song has to go to a library but what it doesn't have to go to is a playlist. Now, if I don't send it to a playlist, then I'm gonna have to go through the process of finding it. So it's kind of annoying. So I'm gonna go ahead and send my song to the sample playlist. And now I'm gonna click edit. And now I can go ahead and expand this out a little bit. So this is my import window. It's very similar to the reflow editor. But what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna do like my normal stuff. I'm gonna click option return to create a new slide. So basically, if you just go after some text and click option return, you can break text up into multiple slides. So I'm going to do that to create a blank first slide. But you see on the left side, we've got all these groups, group one or verse one, verse two, chorus three is what the groups are called. So I'm going to right click on in select group, and I'm going to change the second slide to verse one, because it's going to keep that to that all verse one. And now I'm going to right click on the very first slide. And I'm going to call it intro. And now I'm gonna go all the way to the bottom and I'm gonna create two blank slides. I'm gonna make this one interlude. I'm gonna make this one outro. Cool, so now you can go through and break this up more if you'd want. Just click option enter 
it's different on PC, but I bet you're smart and you'll figure it out. So just break all this up into multiple slides and fantastic. Okay, so now we can go ahead and click import. You can also change your theme up here in the top right if you don't like the one you've selected, but I'm gonna click import. And now I've got my song here that's been added to my playlist. And uh, I don't know why the slides aren't rendering again. I probably need to update ProPresenter. Anyways, um, we can change the theme by changing what the theme is that's presented here. If I click on this one, it'll now be the two lines of text. If I wanna update this, I can go to the reflow editor. You see how it looks very similar to what we just did. It'd be really nice if I could see some of the larger lines of text and see if I could fix it. I bet line eight is bad. Let's go back to show. Let's click on eight. Oh no, it looks beautiful. I was assuming that it would push it into three lines, but sometimes you might need to go through and uh, adjust and fix things to make sure that it fits into the two line scheme because I think that looks really nice. Two lines, more than that is just wild. Okay, so uh, back to the playlist, back to the library. So we talked about how we can create new libraries. Uh, we talked about how we can create a new presentation. I can just create a new presentation and make it blank, right? I don't have any content going in here. I'm just manually creating a presentation. If you're gonna add sermon notes, for example, this is how you would do it. You would just create, you know, change the name to something else, you know, apply a theme if you would like to, uh, keep the size consistent. I like how on the size thing, it shows you the common sizes. 1920 by 1080 is a very common size. But then it also shows you what is the resolution of your screens that are available. I've got main output and stream output available and those obviously there are constant sizes, even though main output is currently not set because it doesn't have a physical screen connected to it. So it's probably just broken. And then we can set a playlist. So I can set it to my sample playlist or I can just set it to no playlist. But ultimately, if I click new, I'm gonna go to my library, to my uh, library and then my sample library is what it's called. If I scroll down to, well, it's taking a while to find it. If I go down to filter, hello world, you can see it pops up. So this is my library and this is, is a search in, in the library and this is finding the presentation that I just created. Now, if I go to sample playlist, if I scroll all the way down to the bottom, it's there. But if I, uh, if I search, I can also find it really easily. So it did put it in there. And then if I delete it out of the, the playlist, I'll go ahead and X out of that. Now I'll go back to my sample and let's go to search. Let's go ahead and try to find it. And now we'll drag it up into the sample playlist. And now you can see that it says it's in the sample playlist. But ultimately, here's something really interesting. Ultimately, all of these items, they are gonna show that they are from somewhere. And they're all in my case from the sample playlist because that's the only, or sorry, that's the only library. So they're gonna show us what library they're coming from and that's because there's only one library. So they're all coming from sample library because they're all stored in sample library whether they're in the playlist or not. And you can see here like in the sample library, they're not showing that they're from anywhere because they're from here. Also something interesting, if you right click on one of these uh, presentation items in a playlist. If you go to, if you wanna like see the file on the computer, all you can do is show in library and now it'll open it up in the library. And now if I right click on it, I can show in finder. So if you ever wanna copy this file to another computer, send it off to a friend, uh, make a backup, this is the file you wanna backup when you wanna backup a specific presentation item. Now, if you wanna backup the entire sample playlist, you can do that by right clicking on the playlist as a whole, going to export. And then when it pops up, you might wanna include media. You can set the location on your computer that you want it to save to. And now if you click save, it'll go through and it'll back up all of the stuff that's in the playlist. Maybe I should have done that because it's like, there's a lot of stuff in there. Maybe I should have picked an easier one, but it looks like it's almost done. So I think we're good. Oh yeah, yeah, it's chugging real hard. Okay, so let's go to my, where did I save that to? There it is, sample playlist dot pro playlist. So that's exactly what it is. So that's how you save a playlist and that's how you export, that's how you save a playlist item and that's how you export a playlist. You can also save a playlist as a template. So every Sunday, if you have a setup ready to go, you can save this playlist as a template and then you can recall that template by clicking plus uh, new playlist from template, 
or you can use Planning Center. If you set up all of your services inside of Planning Center, you can set up a uh, service in Planning Center and then you can import that service. You can even import media. And the th cool thing about Planning Center services is that it'll go through your computer and it'll find songs, it'll find sermon, it'll find countdowns and announcement loops and announcement static presentation items that are the same as is in the Planning Center service. So when it imports, it'll populate all of those things with the same content from ProPresenter. Like it'll pull in the stuff from your library into the playlist and you don't have to drag and drop anything. So that's really cool. If I do, uh, um, let's see, that's a different thing. So yeah, if I right click on that, if I click on the plus here again, I think that's about all we can do. You can create a new playlist folder so we can organize these different playlists and the folders. Realistically though, if you're creating folders, you should probably start deleting stuff. I used to have a folder called old. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, if we don't use it anymore, it goes into the old folder. It's like, just delete it, man. Um, yeah, if you click the plus under the playlist, so I've got my sample playlist open, you can create these headers. So this will be a header, pre-service, worship, and then you can create uh, placeholders. So I would have a play, Holder in here. Maybe we're going to do another song, but I don't know what it's called. Um, so we're just going to add a song two in there. So then if I decide later that we're actually going to do the song, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the song. So click from Good Grace to song two, go to my sample library, and we're going to click on Great is Thy Faithfulness. I'm going to drag it up into here, right? I'm not actually going to drag it into here, like on top of song two, because it won't go. I'm going to drag it into here. So there we go, now we've got Great Is Thy Faithfulness added. And if I right click on this, I think that's all the little tricks that I can do. If I unlink this item, so if I click on a normal song, notice how that's not there. I can hide item, but I can't unlink item. So all of these songs, I can't unlink them, but Great Is Thy Faithfulness, I can unlink because it was put here with on top of a placeholder. So that's kind of cool because now I can, you know, I have some different settings as well, but I can unlink that and then that placeholder is still there, but the song is no longer there. So, okay, I think that's, um, I think that's about everything I can think of to talk about. We can grab songs from the library by just searching them right here, which makes it easier to drag stuff into song two. So if I wanted to, uh, um, let's go ahead and grab gratitude and I want to drag that into here again not dragging it onto song two I'm dragging it up here so I can do that um, these headers titles things you can click on them you can link a timer to it so I think when this is selected it'll trigger the timer which is kind of cool uh, let's just count down okay and then I can set the timer oh okay, that's cool so I can set the timer information. And now let's go to the timer in the bottom right. And I believe I just set the countdown timer. So this top one is 40 minutes. And I set it here to run. So let's change it to 50 minutes. Okay, so now when I click on worship again, it's gonna update it to 50 minutes. Okay, it'll update it when I click trigger. Okay, so there we go. So it updated it and it triggered it from this uh, worship uh, bit. So, okay, if you have any questions, comments, uh, leave a comment on the video and let me know how I can help you in the future. I'm Nathan, it's Crazy Amazing Design. Talk to you next time, bye.